somehow we make the smooth segue to Diana Rossini, the ESPN NFL reporter, and uh, she'll be part of SportsCenter's special today, NFL Free Agency Countdown, today and tomorrow at 3 Eastern on ESPN. You had the opportunity to bow out if you wanted to after that last segment, Diana, so I do appreciate you holding on for dear life here and joining this program. No way. Uh, I was laughing. I was listening. Uh, and I was working at the same time, so you were distracting me a bit. I had a couple of typos in my text messages, so if I get any info wrong today, Ooh. I would hope that this show <laughs> steps up and uh, just takes full blame for for you know getting me off the the ball here because you know it's still early here and we got a lot of action, Dan. All right, uh, you have the uh, special today. Just based off what has happened so far in free agency, what will be the lead story? on ESPN's Sports Center special on free agency. So for for today, yeah. I, I think the wide receiver market and the corner market is going to start taking off. Um it was really quiet yesterday, which I, I wasn't really surprised because I knew those pass rushers were going to be flying off because every team seemed like they were in on that and, and wanted a piece of it. Um look, we can talk about all the pieces of these free agents and and the fits and, and, and who the big players are and the big names. But at the end of all of this, I still think the quarterback conversation is, is the biggest one, which is, it sounds predictable, but I think this off season, especially knowing Deshaun Watson situation, not being happy, this Russell Wilson situation in Seattle that I could comfortably call not happy. The Chicago bears haven't done anything at the quarterback position. The Jets seem open to trading Sam Darnold. So if something were to happen there, obviously that's going to be our lead. Uh, and, and it could, Dan, it could. Something could happen today with that. Yeah, I wonder about Sam Darnold. I mentioned this last hour that he could really change uh, quite a few things. If Sam Darnold's traded, where's he traded to? Um, you know, could it be Seattle? If you don't get a quarterback in return for the Bears, then I got Sam Darnold who's 23 years of age. And I don't know the possibility of that because I know Seattle doesn't want to – Russ won't go to the Jets, but could you get Sam Darnold and still capitalize on a, a desperate Chicago Bears organization? Yeah, and that seems to be the tone of the trade of it actually happening. It's all about desperation, what what the Chicago Bears are willing to give up. And and I look at it like this. Nagy and 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 Pace are, are essentially on one-year deals now, right? They, they, need, they need to win. So – if you're them, what do you care about mortgaging in the future? You're just trying to keep a job. So everything is on the table there in Chicago. I know that. They, they are looking at every single option. But here's the problem. When, when these talks started to, to pick up, I'd say about two weeks ago, in, in regards to Seattle actually picking up the call, actually listening to offers, I had a team that I was talking to that I know was interested. And they said, look, f forget the cap hit. Stop getting all caught up on that. And it's funny. This one GM said, I saw you on TV today. And I'm not saying you sounded dumb, but you sounded dumb. <laughs> uh, yeah, which is always my favorite. I'm like, no, thank you. Um, you can maneuver around cap hits. Don't, don't get caught up in that. And, and it was a good lesson to just remember that when we're talking about these things. Because I, I do think everyone gets bogged down of, you know, why would Seattle do that? Why would they... Apparently, they can make that work. That's not the issue. The issue is Seattle just doesn't have the answer at quarterback. Yeah. They're okay with dealing. They want to play. Just what's their answer? And that seems to be the biggest issue right now when it comes to that actually going down. If I'm the Bears, I go after Deshaun Watson, though, Diana, because I got a guy seven years younger, and if I'm going to put everything on the table and whatever you want – Deshaun Watson's already under contract. Russ is going to go to the Bears and go, oh, by the way, I'd like to be the second highest paid quarterback in the league, which nobody's talking about. Russ isn't going there to play for his old salary. What do you think about the Bears all in on Deshaun instead? Yeah, Russ is going to get paid. Here's the problem with Deshaun, and, and I hate continually saying the same thing because everyone keeps hearing it and, and it's frustrating. Houston is not trading Deshaun Watson. They're not doing it at this point right now. And the the closer you're looking at the calendar and as the league year is coming and you, you start thinking if they 
going to make a move, if they're going to be forced to make a move later in the year, they're going to, they need to start thinking about this now. But the problem is everyone I've spoken to who has interest in Deshaun Watson, which you could assume it's a lot of teams right now, have told me that Casario is a pro and he's polite. Uh, he's, he's open to talking. But you bring up Watson and a trade offer and the conversation ends there. <laughs> They're not even willing to go there. And I spoke to, to a couple of players that uh, are on the free agent market, even some players that have recently signed with Houston. And as much as I was kind of quick to congratulate them on signing in Houston, even though it kind of felt like it felt a little phony. Um, I, I, <laughs> I was curious of, well, what did they tell you about who's going to play quarterback? You know, like you're signing with a new team. Yeah. You want your money, but you want to, I mean, if I'm a player, I want to know what the situation is. And it's, it's funny. It's management is telling players Deshaun will be here. And the players who all talk to Deshaun are saying Deshaun is digging in. He is digging in and willing not to play. Hey, uh, we're talking to Diana Rossini. You can see her part of ESPN Sports Center special. That'll be at 3 Eastern today, NFL Free Agency Countdown. The Saints situation, we got Sean Payton on next hour, but does, is somebody in front of somebody there with the quarterbacking situation with Jameis now coming back and uh, Taysom Hill still there in camp? which I sent Coach Payton a text message early this morning. I said, thank God I'm going first here. I mean, <laughs> I don't know who books the show, but they're brilliant because the last person I want to follow is, is Sean Payton. He's, he's dynamic and uh, brilliant and entertaining. And so, so thank you guys for helping me out here. But uh, Does he have a starting quarterback? I think he does. I, I, think, he, excuse me, I think he thinks he does. Sean will, will, is going to fill your air in about an hour with how much he loves Jameis Winston. And I will always say if I could find one person in my life who loves me as much as Sean Payton loves Taysom Hill, <laughs> you know, I probably would have been married years ago instead of waiting late in my life here uh, because he truly does. He, and, and so it's, it's, so it's so interesting <laughs> speaking to the team and to, to coach about that dynamic at the quarterback position because she really likes both of them. And I think Jameis challenges them. And, 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 and Coach is one of these guys, he he loves taking a player like Jameis who, who really has that natural ability and coaching him up and teaching him the way, you know, to be a more decisive, more accurate type passer. And, and, and the players on the Saints have always told me, always from, I mean, we're going back to camp how incredible Jameis is as just, you know, uh, being part of that organization. Cause that's one of the strongest locker rooms of any teams in the NFL without a doubt. Um, hmm. So it's going to be from, from what I understand, it's going to be a quarterback competition come the summer. He's going to make them compete that compete and, and, and have at it and, and see who, who comes out. But I, I think coach is in a great position here because, you know, you, you can play either of these guys. If Jameis becomes a starter, you have Taysom playing in this sort of utility position. I mean, pretty much playing everywhere for him. So um, we'll see. But but I, I I was told it's going to be a competition. Does your husband love you as much as Sean Payton loves Taysom Hill? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> My husband loves the Eagles. That's about it. It ends there. It's 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 so funny. This this whole free agency thing, Dan, is is such a weird part of of your job as an NFL reporter because it's it's such a love hate thing because love it's Adam Schefter and Ian Rappaport as much as I like to come on here and be like, I'm a big news breaker. I get the little guys once in a while. I get the big fish, but I get paid to really cover the game during the season. Um, and I enjoy it. But the problem is I love to compete and I, I love messing with, I love Adam Schefter. I have all the respect in the world, but I enjoy trying to get a couple from him. And, I, and, and he's open to it. He knows what I'm doing all the time. He's like, go for it, die, go. Um, but just your life, Monday through Friday during free agency, it's it's so unhealthy. You know, like I, I told my husband on Sunday, I said, don't expect any food. Don't expect water in the house. Uh, we're, we're in the middle of a move. Our place is a dump right now. And so I guess he does love me enough to understand and support me here. But it, it's really a sick 
<laughs> part of this job that I, I I enjoy, and I may love this more than him. So we're even. Why do we assume the Patriots know what they're doing in free agency? I don't know why we do. I think Bill Belichick, we give him all the credit because he's he's the greatest coach of all time. But I'm watching this spending spree here. And it's here's Bill Parcells taught me this years ago. He said, stop trying to figure out what teams are going to do. The answer's right in front of you. Nobody changes their style. It's they go by the history of what they do. For example, we know the Colts. They've got so much money right now. They're not spending any money in free agency. They never do. So it's exactly what Bill says. So then you look at New England here and it's like, I mean, no offense, Parcells, you're wrong here because they are not doing what they what they normally do. They're going outside the box. But I, I didn't think they I, had any money, though, Diana. Remember when Brady was there, and then like they've 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 spent they got 137 million dollars in guarantees right now that they that they've spent in less than 24 hours. Where's that money? Super- where's that? Where's it coming from? Two superb tight ends, too. Yeah, Johnu Smith. Hunter Henry, like these guys, these are legit tight ends. And, you know, originally when ye- yesterday, meaning when I started to see the signings, you know, he picks up a guy from Miami, picks up, a you know, Johnny Smith from Tennessee and you're putting the connections. You know, these are, these are players who have been in sort of that new England system with Mike Vrabel in Tennessee and Brian Flores in Miami. There's, there's not going to be a culture shock, you know, when, when they arrive in new England. So I thought that was smart and, you know, a lot of the B reporters have been doing a great job of digging up a lot of the quotes that uh, Belichick has had on these players. And he, he's had this like love affair with all these free agents that nobody even knew about until now that we've discovered. They're finding what they have money. They have they obviously have a lot of it. Yeah. But forget what they're doing. This is all so interesting and fun. But who is the quarterback that that to me, they can make. They can sign every Pro Bowl player that's on the market. But to me, I don't think Cam Newton's the answer. I think he's a placeholder until they figure out what they want to do. And historically, not that they're sticking with that script, but we know what Bill does. He drafts mid-round, you know, we've seen it, Ryan Merritt, Jared Stidham, Jimmy Garoppolo. You know, these are mid-round guys. And that's usually where they go for a quarterback. Granted, they had Tom Brady all these years, so they didn't really need to go. But but that I just think this is really interesting that they're building as if they've got a guy there. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for putting up with us. And uh, have fun today on the uh, the special, the Sports Center special at 3 Eastern uh, NFL Free Agency Countdown. Diana, thank you for joining us. Good luck with the move. And hopefully uh, that the free agency period, you survive, uh, your marriage survives that. Yeah, thank you. Just uh, give Coach Payton a little shout out for me. Say, hey, Rossini says you can't keep up with her, even if you try to be entertaining. So. No, I'm going to say that Sean loves Taysom Hill more than Diana's husband loves her. Oh, he's fully aware of that. Sean was invited to my wedding and all that. He 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 knows my marriage is on the rocks. <laughs> thank you, Diana. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Take That's care. Uh, Diana Rossini, NFL reporter for the Mothership.